Hi guys, good evening to all. Welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar, which is on topic building a digital twin platform with Azure IoT services. Guys, we will be starting the webinar in four to five minutes. As participants are still joining the webinar. I repeat, we'll start the webinar in four to five minutes as participants are still joining the webinar. Hi guys, let's start with the webinar now. A very good evening and welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar 
on topic building a digital twin platform with Azure IoT services. Uh, myself, Shaita Ji, your host for this webinar. I will be helping you out. If you need any help, if you have any queries or questions, you can put the queries or you have any question related to the topic, you can put it in the chat box. So the speaker as well as I can help you out with the same. Moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is uh, India's most distinguished learning company in IT field. We are ready with our top class uh, learning solution that can be made uh, to fit every requirement in every sector across the globe. We have solutions like onboarding add-on, persona-based onboarding solution, then we have certification solution, certification plus add-on, latest technology training solution, and emerging technology training, technology training solution. So these are the solutions on which we do provide trainings. Then today's webinar is organized and handled by emerging technology community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies. You just need to follow our meetup group, which is an emerging technology community for all. You just have to get a meetup app installed on your phone or on device to follow this community. I will be sharing the link in the chat box for you all. Then the code of conduct that you all need to follow. Please note, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. The recording will be available to you all on our official YouTube channel. I repeat the recording for this webinar will be available and accessible to you all on our official YouTube channel. You just have to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel link will be give, provided to you all in the chat box later on. Today's speaker for this emerging technology webinar is Mr. Navjoti Bharwa. He works with Synergetic as an AVP technology, AVP technology of technology department. He has years of experience in delivering training on emerging technologies and certification training as well. Then the agenda for, for this webinar, you will get an overview of the topic, then why to build a digital twin platform and more. Then we have upcoming ATT webinar on topic as self-learning automation of money, uh, machine learning pipeline using autonomous analytics, which is on 10th of August from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. The link will be given to you all, the registration link, so you can go and register yourself. Then we have live webinar on Microsoft Entra, which is on 24th of August. Again, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., the registration link will be given to you all in the chat box. So if you are interested to attend this uh, ATT webinar, you can go and register yourself. Then do follow us on our social media platforms. The page, uh, the social media links will be given to you all in the chat box, so you can go and uh, follow us on our social media platforms. To get the relevant updates on the webinars, workshops, and training which we do. Also, I have shared the link uh, for the blog which has been written by Navjoti sir. So you can go and read, uh, give a read to it. That's all. Thank you. Over to you, Navjoti sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, Saitali. So let me start this uh, presentations uh, by sharing my ppt uh, 
Give me a minute. So hope everybody can hear me and everybody can see the PPT that I'm sharing with you. So if you can see, please respond accordingly. All right, thank you so much. So today we are going to talk about the topic, as you can see, how we can enhance a traditional IoT solutions that we have been developing using Microsoft as your cloud services by adding a new services into the ecosystem of IoT solutions called Azure Digital Twins. So primarily we are going to look at how Azure Digital Twins ADT is going to empower a traditional I IoT solutions. That would be the primary objective of this uh, two hour sessions that we are going to have. My name is Navjoti Borua. I'm an MCT and working as an AVP technology at Synergetics. I have been working with the cloud technology, especially from Microsoft Azure and AWS for quite some time. And specifically, the workload like application modernizations, Internet of Things, and uh, artificial intelligence specific uh, the workload where I am working at this moment. Now, what we are going to discuss, there are a couple of uh, point that we are going to bring into this today's uh, conversations. The number one, we are going to explore what are the components of an Azure Digital Twins, the ADT, in order to develop an IoT solutions using Microsoft Azure Cloud Services. And once you have identifying as it as your digital twin, so how we can create or how we can deploy or how we can provisions as your digital twins instance on Microsoft Cloud Platform. And what we are going to do with that particular instance. This is what uh, probably uh, we are going to go and explore uh, during today's session. And of course, to get an idea how everything is going to work together, you are going to, I will walk you through a demo of uh, Azure Digital Twins at the end. So let's get started by knowing what exactly as it, Azure Digital Twins and how Azure Digital Twins can enhance the traditional IoT solutions that we have been developing from so many years. Now, when you talk about a typical reference architecture of an IoT solutions that we usually develop with the help of Microsoft Azure backend services, so any IoT solutions typically will have three components. The first one is the, the things that is all about IoT device and the sensors who are supposed to capture the data from a given environment and send it across to the Microsoft Cloud. Now, in order to send those data to the Microsoft Cloud, so we need to write program that can run on those device who's supposed to send the data to the cloud. So maybe you are a Python developer or a .NET developer or a Java developers. So all of you can go and write application 
and then run on those devices. And those devices can be connected to the sensor who's supposed to give data to the device and the device supposed to send those data back to the cloud. Now, the question is that why we are sending the data to the cloud, as you can see, and that's how the insight will come into the picture because we want to analyze those data. We want to get insight to the data to make it more meaningful to the business. Maybe we want to detect the anomalies of all the incoming data. Now, it could be an example of any data, like suppose I'm reading a temperature from a particular room in a floor of a building. So I'm constantly monitoring the temperature from a given room, from a particular building, from a particular floor. And I, I have been given the job of saying that, OK, if the temperature threshold go beyond 24 degrees, then probably we need to call back the AC system and you know, bring down the temperature at real time. This is a kind of, you know, uh, IoT implementations to just to make you understand, you know, how this is going to happen. So until we get insight to the data, until we know those data, we won't be able to take any action because conditional actions need to be taken place. As I said, if your temperature go be, goes beyond 24 or maybe temperature below 15 or 16, then what need to be done? So there may be a multiple service to operate the actions or execute the actions that you wanted to, you know, incorporate in a given workload. It could be any, but there would be a set of service to perform an actions. There would be a set of service to get insight to the data to make it more meaningful or making possible to take an an action so maybe you know um, by reading the data what need to be done or eventually we can to take those data to a dashboard to create a kind of real time uh, data flow that people can see what is happening uh, in the remote uh, environment from where we have collected the data back to the cloud by creating a dashboard at real time. And you should be able to interact with that particular dashboard to initiate an actions, to complete an actions, and so on and so forth. So this is what is a reference architecture. There are many services going to come and go and going to play a very important role in the ecosystem of IoT development, as you can see on the screen. I don't want to go uh, service by service what you are looking at on the screen, but yes. We need to know the overall. Implementation of an IoT solutions, what you can see right in uh, right at this moment. So three component, the things it's all about device and sensor who's supposed to send me the data to the cloud. And the cloud, with the help of set of service, we can get inside to the data to make those data more meaningful or to take a decisions by looking at the data. By calling a service from the actions So, what type of actions that you want to perform. From your workload, what do you want to do if the data? Is going to meet the conditions that you set. Or you can go and analyze those data by using multiple analytics services that is available on Microsoft Cloud. And then subsequently you can create a dashboard to visualize those data that you have captured from the underlying devices from the remote locations. Now, having said that, this is a reference architecture that typically IoT developer is going to go and explore. IoT developer is going to go and make use of them. Now to enhance this reference architecture, today we are going to talk about a new service that is introduced by Microsoft called Azure Digital Twins. 
Now, what basically as your digital twins is capable of doing things inside the IoT solution. That is what we are going to explore today. Now, by definition, Azure Digital Twin is a platform as a service. It's a pass offering from Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. Who can create a knowledge graph. Based on the, the physical. Infrastructure like I can create a model of a building. OK. And uh, the building may have multiple floor as you can see on the screen. And every floor will have multiple rooms. So how visually or graphically we can represent. A physical system from where we supposed to collect the data and that is typically done by the Azure Digital Twins. You can visualize the entire physical system. By creating a graph by representing in a form of graphs with a collection of node and interconnected those node by creating a relations. We are going to explore more on that. So we would like to actually digitalize the physical environment. You know. That we can. Basically go and ask questions to a node that belongs to the graph to know any given point in time what is happening in that particular node. The node is basically re representing a physical component from the actual physical environment. Either it could be a buildings, either it could be a. Uh, railway stations or it could be a parking lot or it could be some, any physical environment what we are talking about. It could be a stadium like you know, so we should be able to present those physical entities by creating a graph and which is basically full digitalizations of those physical entities back into the graph by presenting them in a form of nodes by interconnecting them with the help of relationship. Now this is the knowledge graph because this graph is going to give you many things, many informations like you just need to browse over the graph so you should be able to get the detail. What about that physical entities? In a form of. Uh, a graph or in a form of visual entities in a form of visual elements. As I said, and those node would be interconnected. You know, and it become more interactive. As I said, you can ask by going after a particular node from the graph and the node is going to tell you so what exactly that entity that represents in the physical environment. So it's basically bring your physical, although your physical environment in a remote place from where you are collecting a data. But for me as a stakeholder of this workload, I should be able to represent that physical entities, the physical environment digitally right in front of me. And that is the power of the Azure Digital Twins. And it makes sense in context of IOT Internet of Things because Internet of Things is all about reading data from an environment. It could be a complex environment or it could be a simple environment. It's all about devices. It's all about sensors. Who can collect data and send them back to the Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform for getting insight to this data. So when you talk about put it, putting the digital twins in the ecosystem of ADT solutions as your digital solutions. As I said before also, so the entire solutions that we are going to build. Is a combination of other Azure services as a part of the. Bigger IoT solutions, if you think of your IoT solutions would be bigger. 
So ADT is just a one component, but ADT is going to work with the many services from the Microsoft Azure. As you can see on the screen. So as ADT is going to take data from some kind of services who can provide the data to an ADT like an input. These are also Microsoft Azure services. After that, the ADT also can pump the data into some other services to act, to take an action because it's just a visual representations of the physical environment that you want to connect. To the Microsoft Azure Cloud. So by having that service, you should be able to visualize. Everything about that physical environment that you're supposed to control from your dashboard. So that is how your digital twin is going to work with the rest of the services from both the side, from the input and the output point of views. But yes, in between input and output, the digital twin is responsible for presenting the physical environment in a form of graphs the collection of node interconnected node by having a relations among them. Right, so I just do not want because there are many services they're talking about. It could be an IOT hub or it could be a lossy gap in the other side. So digital twin can receive data from the IOT hub, but IOT hub can receive uh, data from the actual device. Because IoT hub is a kind of gateway. From the Microsoft Azure, so all the devices. Can send the data to an IoT hub and IoT hub can. Connect with Azure Digital Twins. And after Azure Digital Twins, it can go to. Other services like services like uh, something called the lossy cap, which is a workflow that we want to build on the data that has. Uh, come to the IoT hub and it has gone up via as your digital twins, what we are presenting. In between input and output at this moment. So it could be an upstream. It is all about input. This digital twin can receive data from an upstream service like IoT Hub and subsequently Digital Twin can also route the data output to the downstream services. Like they're talking about time series inside as your map. Stories workflow integrations that is all about as your logic app analytics and many more. Now, this session is not going to go and discuss a building a complete. Just a minute. So this this session is not typically go and talk about building a complete. IOT solutions, as I said before, also the primary focus is going to go uh, discuss about the ADT, the one component. Uh, in the IOT solutions and uh, it's not going to talk about like what is IOT hub and how the data can come into an IOT hub and so on and so forth or what is uh, time series or logic app who's supposed to receive the output from the digital twin, something like that. So primary focus is what digital twin is capable uh, in the IoT solutions. So digital twin support the ability to aggregate and combine data from the multiple source. In a single securely accessible locations, this is what. Uh, we have been talking about there may be kind of. Uh, 
the source of the data that will flow to the digital twins can be more than one. You know, so we can take data from the devices. We can take data from the some kind of edge devices. We can take data from some kind of the physical files. So it could be a multi source like from where the digital twin can accept data. And that can be presented in a form of graph. So digital twin also support any industry vertical investing in an IoT has the flexibility to connect the input and output that individual company requires. As I said, IoT is really robust. It's not only uh, used by one verticals or uh, uh, the one uh, industries. IoT is being popular in multiple industries like manufacturing retail you know in banking okay hospitalities you know these are or maybe uh yeah i mean like uh, you will be able to explore uh, how this iot or how this particular uh, uh, iot uh, services uh, can be spread across multiple industry verticals as i say so iot is not being targeted only to the manufacturing industry only so it can accommodate it's it's very agile because the services uh, around the iot solutions would be really agile it's more adaptive to any kind of uh, solutions uh, that you would be building uh, for a particular uh, okay uh, so any kind of uh, uh, industry vertical as your digital twins use the robust event system to build the dynamic business logic and the data processing as i said these things before also Dynamic data processing or uh, dynamic business logic is all about adaptabilities. Like, okay, today I have built a one graph and tomorrow I will change my model. I'll change my entity. Can I re rebuild the graph? Yes, you can rebuild the graph with a new uh, business logic. Yes, you can do. It's very dynamic. It is not a fix that once we have created a model, and we took that model to the digital twins and represent the model in a form of graph. But any times we can change the model. Subsequently, we can alter the graph that we want to see uh, right from the digital twins. And as I said before, also as your digital twin is uh, is going to integrate with uh, the other services like analytics and AI services help you to track what has happened in the past and by knowing the past you should be able to predict the future with the help of uh, analytics and ai services that is available from microsoft cloud now the main component of the digital twin is all about model as i said before we have to create a model for my physical environment as i said I'm talking about a building and inside a building there would be multiple floor. And from the floor. There will be multiple rooms. So how we are going to go and present that building. So we need to come back and start creating a model that to represent that building. So this is the model that we are talking about the digital tool model. So digital twin model is going to provide a blueprint that used to create a digital twin entities within your digital twins environment. So what goes inside the model? OK. So what goes inside the model? So model is going to have something like properties 
The properties are data fields that represent. It's like a class that we have inside a class called property. It's a blueprint. OK, so when you talk about the room model, so room is going to have a name. That could be one property, the display name of that particular room. Or maybe which floor that room belongs to. That could be another property. So the property is always represent the state of an entities. That's that's typically the concept of an object oriented programming language from the class point of view. Class and object point of views. So your model also going to have the properties we are going to see practically. And the another thing is the telemetries. The telemetry fails to represent the measurement or an event. There are often used to describe the device sensor reading. Like for example, I was giving an example saying I want to read the temperature from a room of a particular floor of a particular building. In every five second interval. Or maybe I want to read the humidity or a pressure from a particular room in every five second interval. So whether it is temperature, whether it is humidity, whether it is a pressure, is all of them called as a telemetries because that is going to go and represent the data that we are going to present or we are going to get insight to or we are going to take an actions based on those telemetries. So example of a telemetries could be a Temperature, it could be humidity, or it could be a pressure. That is what I want to read from a given physical uh, environment. Then, followed by components, allow you to build your model interface and assembly for other interfaces that we'll be talking about that because your component is 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 is. Uh, is 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 a collection of you know you can say model and 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 those model can be accessed from the outside world with the help of those interface you know so we will look into that what components that we are referring uh, in this context but at this moment it's it will allow you to build your model interface and that can be produced as an assembly of another interface like you can consume a model from another model also in a form of components it's a plug and play kind of thing ultimately the model would be developed by writing codes using dotnet or any other language who allow us to write components or allow us to create model for the digital twins as long as we get an SDK for a particular language, we should be able to do it. And finally, the another important part of this model is the relationship, as I say. So what kind of relationship we can think of like. One building can have multiple floors. Floor can have multiple rooms so what could be the relations between the floor and rooms it's a kind of one to many one floor can have many rooms one building can have many floors you know so we have to give a name of the relationship and the relationship is going to go and create a connections between the two entity that i'll be presenting in the graph of my digital twins because entity like building, entity like floor, entity like room, this is all about independent entity that I'm talking about, but how you're going to connect, how you're going to go and create connections between those entities by creating relationship. Like how do you create a relationship between our table in the RDBMS? The similarly, I mean, the concept remain the same, what we are talking about at this moment.
Now, we understood uh, what is the model. So model is just a blueprint, like a class with some properties and the relationship and the telemetries mainly. And it can be treated as a component that we can use this component from uh, external world as a part of the model. Like the other blueprints can be embedded into the existing blueprints. It's like taking kind of a reference uh, from the one uh, model. So, in order to create the model, so what language that we are going to opt for? The language is called Digital Twin Definition Language, DTDL, which is basically JSON based definition, uh, the, the, the language definition. Okay, now this JSON based language definitions will have some typical fields like ID, an identifier for the model, unique identifier for every model, which is going to create a node within your graph. The type is always the same, the kind of information is being described. It could be an interface, property, telemetry, relations, and component. The context. So every JSON document will have a single context. Right, so that would be followed by something like DTMI. These are all definitions language like we use in an XML long back. Now it is being used for validating the JSON document. So you cannot go and write a JSON documents like how you want to write them because this JSON document is driven by definition language. It means there would be a proper structure of this particular JSON document. You have to follow the structure. Like you have to start with an ID. You have to use type. You have to use context and the rest is display name and the contents. So what we need to understand that whenever we are going to write a model with the help of JSON based definition language, we need to follow some syntax. We need to follow some data definitions that is being predefined under the DTDL, that is your digital twin definition language. Because typically when it talks about a JSON, JSON could be any documents. I can just go and write my, you know, properties and the values separated by colons, putting them in a double quote, but that is not what digital twin definition language is talking about. So we need to follow some kind of schema that is predefined for the DTDL. Now, how it look like, you know, so as we said, I'll be going and practically explore that, you know, how things can be done and what uh, uh, I am explaining at this moment. I guess uh, you will be more, uh, you will get more clarities when you practically see uh, what model that I am talking about and what goes inside the model and how this model is going to be presented in a form of JSON document. But it's just a kind of uh, uh, example of uh, DTDL, as you can see. You started with something like planets and inside the planets you have. Those planets like one of them mass and one of them something like OK from. Uh, telemetries, the type is telemetries, type is property, you know, all these things that you can see type is relationship. There would be a satellite in that particular. So who can read the temperature from that? 
particular planet and so on and so forth. And the components, it's like um, something like that. So that will go into a particular schema. So as you go and create those definitions for a particular model, you will get to know. But primarily at this moment, we just need to understand two things like properties, telemetries and relationship. OK, for complex that we need to go with the components that you may go and use a components that may be externally developed by taking reference from that particular model from where you are going to use them. OK, so by having said that, you know, whatever we did out there that can be physically present. In a form of. The graphical node this is a graph of nodes, interconnected nodes so with the relations among them. You can see the factory one with this kind of nodes they're talking about. These are the sensors that available within this cave one, cave two, and cave three is like out there. So the first steps in adding a digital twin to an ADT is now upload the model type to your ADT instance. The first we have to create an ADT by going into the Microsoft Azure and then subsequently we need to upload the model and then we have to create a graph based on the model that we have uploaded and the graph look like what you are looking at on the screen. So I have already explained the other part like you know that those nodes within a graph is being interconnected uh, with the help of uh, by, by defining a relationship which must be defined as a part of this model. So when I develop when I create a model in that model also we have already talked about the relationship. So what kind of relationship is going to have between the nodes that will be creating that belongs to a particular model that we are creating for a physical environment. Now, how am I going to practically look at those things? So we need to know what are the tools available to develop as your digital twin solutions. So I can develop as your ADT solutions using different tools or by writing our own code also. So if I go and check this out that this is what we go and get to see. For example, I can create a digital twins. I can manage digital twins. This is what uh, the complete tables, the capabilities. So from the Azure portal, I can create a digital twins and I can configure a digital twins instances. From the CLI also, we can do the same thing from the Visual Studio or Visual Studio code by writing a code using .NET or maybe some other language. We should be able to create digital twins. We should be able to manage and the configure the digital twins on the cloud. Develop the DTL model files. By writing code. Build a graph environment by writing codes, query and manage graph environment by writing code from the Visual Studio. That is the more. functionalities that we are going to get in order to develop an ADT solutions by writing our application. And rest of them are very random, so specific to a particular OK, so.
Yeah, Praveen, so if you have any question. Okay. So now coming back now, how we can explore the distant twin because it's just a two hour sessions that we just need to figure out. You know how quickly we can go and look at. In actions, how digital twins can. Be used. Uh, in the IOT solutions, so that is what we are going to go and explore through. A set of demos by having a digital twin instance on the Microsoft Cloud. So we are going to create model. We are going to create a digital twins based on that particular model. We are going to look at the relations among the entities from that particular model, and we should be able to queries. So what goes inside the graphs once the graph is created completely? From any applications, we should be able to figure out. So what is the current representation of the, of the graph? So essentially what we are saying, what is the current representations of the physical environment which is being digitally presented with the help of graph? So that is what probably we are going to go and explore through a few set of demos. Present, yes, yes, Praveen, yes, that is present. The cross mark is saying that this is possible. It's not negative, like it is not possible. It is possible. Yes. OK, so let's go to the then. Uh, uh, what do you call uh, for the? Demo part. So I'll just go to my dev system. Yes. So I'm in an another machine, so hope you can see that from where I'm going to do the demo for you. <clears throat> Let's do it. So first I will go to Microsoft Azure. So I'll go to the Azure management portal. I'll create a new dashboard called IoT ADT. Sorry, I can just go and create it. So this is an empty dashboard that I'm creating from my management portal. Then I'll be looking for the service that I have been talking about. So by definition, as your digital twin is a pass offering, it's a platform as a service. And we have already explored the capability of the as your digital twin. So I can go and find that. So we get it as your digital twin. So this is the as your digital twins. It said create a next generation IoT connected solutions that model the real world. That's the power of the Azure Digital Twins. So we go and create this. I'll create a resource group. Demo ADT. I'm giving a name of my ADT.
and I'll go pick up a location. Assigned as your digital twins owners, because if I want to access this particular digital twin uh, from my applications, I'll be using the owner rights to get access to this particular resources. Now, rest of those properties I'll take as a default. And I'll try and deploy the one instance of a digital twins. So I'll just go and create it. So digital twin instance started deploying. So in the meantime, so I'll go to the Visual Studio and get my application. Through which we are going to create model. So I can see I have got two projects in my solution. So first I will go to the sample client app, as you can see right there. This is a .NET application. You see the property of this application. It is written in .NET Core 3.1. We can write this application in .NET 6 or upcoming .NET 7 also, and we can subsequently write this program with another language also, as long as ADT SDK is being made available by Microsoft to the other language through which we should be able to communicate with the instance that I have just created under my subscription. So this is successfully created. I want to pin it to my dashboard. So this is my the instance. So what instance it is? It is an Azure Digital Twin instance. So I can quickly get inside to this instance. If my application wants to connect to this instance, so we need the host name. So there is a host name from the overview of my Azure Digital Twins, as you can see on the right left top corner. Then I copy this host name because if any operations that we want to perform on this instance from my application, so I need to know the host name of that service that we have deployed on the cloud. So I copy the host name. I go back to my applications in an app setting .json. You see that is called instance URL. And I just need to go and replace this. As an endpoint. We have to create so that is the demo ADT 007.API is TOS2 digital twins dot Azure dot net. This is the default domain. This is the locations and this is the type of service. It's a form of API and that is the, the name, the instance name that we have given at the time of creating and followed by HTTPS. Now 
Now, if my application wants to talk to this instance, we have to write code. The code is already written in the program.cs by taking, by reading the configuration files, the instance property out there. And it will try and authenticate with the default authentications used as your default credentials. The default credentials means my Visual Studio tool is already connected to the Microsoft Azure using this credentials that I have on the top. Here it is. So you will take the same Active Directory credentials, which is currently populated in my Visual Studio, and it will authenticate myself and try connect to these instances. So to just to test it, we can go to the console windows, like open it in the terminal. And I can just say .NET build. Just to build this application before I want to run it. So build is succeeded. And then I can say .NET run. So if I running this application by using a command, it said authentication is done with the default authentications. Now it is ready. It is ready to. So it is ready to take the commands. That I can interactively work with the instance because now this application is connected to the Azure Digital Twins that we have deployed on the cloud. Now I can ask any query, any anything, or I can find any command, you know, to make it happen in the Digital Twins instance. So for timing, I just close this. So I break this. Then I'll go to the a model first. Now we need to understand first. We started with the model only. So how the model look like? We talk about the definition language to create a model. So if I go to the model folders, inside the model folders, you get to see a model by the name called rooms and the floor. So if I go to the rooms and you can see this, And this is a kind of, as I explained that this is an ID and a type. That is an interface. It's basically a component that I'm creating. Which is started with this square bracket. And content is a property. OK, so this is what the properties that we are talking about. So. Furthermore, it could be a telemetry like and the data type of the temperature is double. Data type of this humidity is something like this. So if I want to go and incorporate. We can update say humidity level, something like this or we can get more property into this a model. Like I can just go with a comma. I can have more. So the next property is a room name. Name of the properties type is string. And the relationship will contains. So so we just need to go and understand that every floor 
there is a flow.json also. And here also relationship is contains like the relationship on this room. So there is a relations between the floor and the rooms. This is the two model is going to validate. So you say this floor is going to contain. So this floor also may have some kind of ownership or so who owned that particular floor and so on and so forth. Department and something like that, but the relations is the contain that we can go and check out at the time of final creations of this uh, digital twins uh, graph. So whatever the changes that we have done in my room. With the new things, we just put the relations uh, contain out there. As you can see, so primary focus because it could be dynamic, so you can go on and on and creating your own model based on your requirement because this is supposed to be representative of physical environment. So here we are talking about building floors in the room. It could be anything. So accordingly, you can go and create your model. Then it's just very simple because the format of the model is always being treated as a JSON. Now, I just wanted to go and because now we need to upload the model to the digital twins. So with that, I want to run this application once again, so I'll come back to my. The console from where we can write the command. Say dot net run. The last command that we have given. And uh, we are ready to fire the command. So what command that we are looking for? So we are saying that I want to create. I want to upload the model to the digital twin. So what are the model rooms and the floors? This is the two model that I want to go and you know there is another model also. As you can see right there. OK, so this is space interface model. There is a thermostat model also. The thermostat is the actually the device that can be presented through a model. The thermostat is a device who's supposed to read uh, the the what do you call the temperature and that will have the firmware versions and all kind of stuff as you can see out there. So we are not going to go and create or upload this other model, but we are going to upload the two model floor and a room. So I can go to this. Interactive console. And we should be able to write this command. The first command we said, OK, I want to create model rooms and floor. I just press enter. So it's just submitting the model room.json and the floor.json as you can see from my model folder. And it says models are created successfully. So if I want to go and see whether my models got created or not. So you should be able to see it by just giving a command like get models. So you can see we found two models. This is the two model which is being submitted to the. As your digital twin. So because this application, this interactive console is connected to the Azure digital twins. So whatever we are doing from this console that is happening back in the digital twins. But subsequently, if you want to go and create. 
the same model without doing any kind of modifications out there. So if I try and give the same command, create model rules, you are going to get an exception because the room is already exist. The model ID, because the model ID is unique, because you cannot create with the same model ID that goes inside the rooms all over again, so you cannot do it. So that is also you need to know. So every model will have a unique IDs. The room or a floor model have an unique IDs that was started with the ID component of the model that we discuss with a unique value. So now we need to go and create the digital twins. The digital twins means the graph. That we are about to create. OK. So now the first graph that we'll be creating like. So we are doing it manually at this moment, so we are trying to create a graph saying that. If you create another room so you can have. another model of these rooms with a different IDs. OK, so you can always do that or you can. Use the same model by using a command. As you can see, suppose this is a command, same model you can use to create two rooms. You know that is also possible. So that is what we are about to do at this moment. So how many rooms that we would be creating? Hypothetically, maybe two. So here I say the create digital twins from the ID that we have. The name of the room is the room zero. And we are setting the property value 70. Humidity level 30. So there is a room that we are going to create by the name called room zero with temperature 70 and humidity level 30. That is what the first room that we are going to create in the digital twin. So it is. So let us go and clean this. Uh, let me just go and make sure that we should be able to create that. All things together. OK, so it's floor one created successfully and then uh, Floor one and floor twos. The floor one also created successfully. Let me go and check this out. What we are doing at this moment. But. As I said. This is the command that we can provide just to make. What you have asked the question, so let me explain that. Power BI. So Power BI is uh, whoever has asked questions. So Power BI is not the graph that we are talking about. The graph here inside the digital twins. So Power BI graph is different. So Power BI graph is all about your line graph, bar graphs based on incoming data of a data source. This graph is not the graph that you typically use the word graph. Here the graph means is a interconnected nodes. Like a graph database. OK, so that is not the same meaning what you have learned in the Power BI. And what you are learning inside an ADT. OK, it's a two different things all together. OK, I'll just go and see this.
Okay, so this is a kind of interactive tool. So I'm creating a room here, the zero room name with the same model name. You can see that model out there. That is the same one and we are creating room two by the name called room one with a different property values. Then we are putting We are creating floor one. The automatically there is a relations by the name called contains. So floor one, floor zero will have the room zero, floor one. So programmatically in the schema, it is being given out there. Accordingly, you should be able to see the graph. So again, I'm saying the graph word that we are using in context of digital twins and the graph word that we will be using in context of power bi is too different so here the graph we are trying to present a physical environment in a form of nodes interconnected nodes that we do not do in the power bi so hope you understood the difference between the power bi and the digital twins what we are discussing at this moment it is specific to only the IoT solutions, Internet of Things. Because first you have to fundamentally understand what is Internet of Things, then you will get to know. As I said before also, the Internet of Things is all about the physical environment from where you want to collect data using sensor and devices. But sometimes, for the end user, it becomes difficult because they cannot see the physical environment. IoT that data was collect. No, digital twin is not used for data collections. Okay. Uh, then again, I said, uh, so whoever is asking this question so digital twin is not to collect the data digital twin is to represent the physical environment digitalizing the physical collection data of a digit uh, iot device was happened 25 years back as a concept of iot but yes we are talking about in context of microsoft azure because uh, those device, the modern device that is being. There is no simulate. This is a real one. You can create a simulator for 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 to understand the workflow. But when you talk about uh, IoT solutions, you cannot use a simulated data. You have to use a real data, a real sensor who captured the temperature, humidity and pressure from a particular room. I'm just giving one example, but it could be any example, but to make you understand. Because the simulate simulations is what is a fake data, which is not real, so you can write a code to simulate that data. So simulation is basically used to learn the technology or maybe learn the solution. But when you go to a production environment, it has to be a real data. Your device has to give the real temperature, not the simulated temperature. What you are going to do with the simulated temperature? OK. Simulation is mathematical, so rely. I don't understand. OK. So I'm not able to understand what you are asking. Mathematical, so reliable. So what do you mean by simulation? OK, so first you need to define what is simulator. The simulations means. The back end of your IoT system. Yeah, you can what use called testing. It's not the production. OK. So suppose you can write a code. And. You can deploy the code. On a device and not asking the device to collect the data, you can always simulate. Okay, always write a logic to simulate a, suppose you are you are trying to capture a temperature. So give me a simulated temperature. You can write a code in between temperature between something like 
18 to 24 degrees. That is all about simulation. Okay. So you write a code to capture the simulated data and then send those data to the backend. Now, in real sense, the backend has to go and operate on this data. Means some kind of business logic need to be operated. Some kind of actions need to be performed on those collected data. You can still go and do that. Okay. So you can still go and do that. The possibility of understanding the workflow of an IoT solutions, you can always work with the Synapse. We are also going to work with the simulations if the time permits. I'll show you how simulator is going to generate the data and pump those data to the cloud. And eventually this data will go to an ADT. ADT is a visual representation of the physical environments. I have been saying this multiple times, so do not relate the digital twins with anything else, Power BI or uh, any any other services, okay? And digital twin is specific to the IoT because only in IoT we talk about the physical environments from where we want to collect the data. It could be a car, it could be a building, it could be a lift, it could be a aeroplanes, it could be a kind of you know, uh, yeah, it could be any anything because that is all about Internet of Things. Like anything can be connected to the Internet backbone to produce data, to take decisions, to analyze those data, to predict based on the incoming data, or something like that. Okay, so, so let's go back to my digital twins. Now, we just need to say that, okay, something is being done. We have connected the digital twins. So I explore the digital twins. There's a link to open as your Twin Explorer. So I log in as the same login that I log in with my Azure. Okay, so I close because this is what we get. So we get a floor and the rooms. So there's a query I can make. So I want to know all the digital twins that is required. Okay, so I can go and run this query there. So I just go and run this queries. So we can see that this is the two floor that we can see, which was created. Okay, so this is the floor is created at this moment. OK, so we just need to go and create a rooms under the floor. So now the point what I'm trying to tell you that we can click a floor. You should be able to go and see all kind of details out there. And tomorrow if the data is being pumped from the simulators or maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, what do we call? from uh, from the real device uh, to the IoT hub. It goes like this, as I already explained, but just to make things uh, in it. So just to what I'm trying to explain. This tool. So 
what basically is going to happen during this activity that we are talking about? We said, I have the devices. This is your IoT device. Of course, it would go and connect with the sensors. Right, so so IoT device is going to connect with the sensor, and you'll be writing code here using .NET, Java, Python's. Okay, so you'll be writing code here. Either you can simulate your data to send the data to the Microsoft Azure. This is your Azure. So you can simulate the data or you are actually going and collecting data from the sensor by writing a code. So you can write a simulation code, you can write an actual code to read data from those sensors and send it to the cloud. Now, when we'll be sending a cloud, you'll be using protocol which is supported by the cloud, like HTTPS is one of them, or AMQP, or different protocol that you can use, the binary protocol or HTTP protocol to send those telemetries, what we discussed, to Azure. Now, who is going to take this data? So typically, there is a service called IoT Hub. So IoT Hub. The reference architecture, you have seen that. So IoT Hub supposed to take this data. It may come from a multiple sensor or multiple devices from a multiple locations, but IoT Hub, it's actually act as a gateway to receive or aggregate data coming from the multiple sources. Okay. So now, once the data has come into the IoT hub, then the next part, what we have been talking about, this is our ADT, as your digital twin. All right, so that is what we have been talking about. Now, ADT is nothing to do with any data. So ADT is saying that, okay, if I want to know about the physical environment, which floor, which sensor, what are the firmwares that is being uh, installed on a particular device, I want to know them graphically. And that is why we have been talking about presenting them. OK, presenting them as a graph. So which is basically. Some kind of. Interconnections. Yeah, this is priority deployment is a quite expensive. Yes, so expensive for what? Like, you know. Uh, it is not ex expensive at all, IoT solutions, uh, you know, so IoT because the most of the services from an IoT solution, apart from the device, because device is a physical assets. And all the services who will be dealing with your data will come from the Microsoft Azure in most of them are pass platform as a service like IoT hub is a pass who will aggregate that data and give it to the digital twins and all this graph that is being presented of the physical environment with the digital twins can get the relevant informations that has come through the iot hub 
and subsequently the digital twin also can take this to some kind of the services who can perform an actions on the data after presenting data visually in a form of graph. So every node in the graph is nothing but the physical assets. It could be a floor, it could be a room, it could be a building, it could be a floor or it could be a room. And that is the job of the digital twin. So by having a digital twins, he said, I can digitalize and I can visualize my physical environment. It does not matter where I am. I don't have to visit my remote physical locations from where I from where I supposed to collect them. I can get complete information, complete visualizations of that physical environments by asking the digital twins of my IoT solutions. OK, so previously the IoT solutions when the Azure was not there, the cloud was not there. It was pretty complex because we need to build all the services on our own. These services that I'm talking about need to be built on our own because eventually you have to deal with your data. Eventually you have to run your business, but today it is being more cost effective. It's become more less expensive because the cloud has popped in, the cloud has come. And. Start implementing. And start developing IoT solutions with the help of cloud services. It become inexpensive today. And it become more. Innovative. The innovation has come in the field of Internet of Things, which was not being thought before. This kind of you know, uh, implementations, this kind of productive implementations, what we see with the help of the cloud services that we are currently talking about at this moment. OK, so. So what what we are trying to. Say it like. Uh, Let me go back. And yes, of course, this is also a cloud service. As I said, this also a Azure services. Who can take action? For example, it could be a logic app. It could be a machine learning as your machine learning. Right, so it could be something else. It could be as your function. OK. So let me go back to this one, so let me delete this everything. So I just wanted to. Delete the model. Everything I want to recreate again. So once it is being deleted, so I can just go and see it. The floor that need to be deleted. This is the twin itself. I can recreate, I can remove anytime whenever we feel like. So this also delete the twin. So I can refresh this at this moment. OK, so I have an empty model at this moment. I'll go back to my. Applications, I'll recreate this one more time, so I just. Do it. I will go to my rooms and change this. Uh, 
the new version of this room. So like I can see the version is something like two. And uh, I can use the context would be something like three. I'm changing some value to make it unique because it say already exist. So let me run this once again. So let me save first, make sure that any changes in a model to be saved. OK, so the first thing we are going to go and create the models, the rooms and the floor. This is what we did. So it says the submitting the model. Now once the model is being submitted, now we need to create a digital twins from that particular model. OK, but before that. We should be able to see. So what are the get models? Yes, we got a two models once again. With the respective things, there was some overlapping of the model out there. And now we should be able to. Go and create the digital twins. The first command, as I said in my notepad. This one, the room zero. And this is what I'm going to go and create it. So room zero has created successfully. Then we'll go and create room one. So room one also got created successfully and then we have to bind them together. With the floor. Sorry. So I'm just going to connect the floor. With the room. So floor zero is created successfully. And similarly. So we do not have to go and focus on this. Complete programming at this moment because it would be too early to go back and understand how the programming is being uh, made like, you know, as I say, you need to explore this. Uh, so how this command is working, but because behind that. So we have the code like, you know, I can just go through this code. So these are the code. So in order to perform those command, because if you go back to the presentation, as I said, SDK was supporting everything. So we can create model. We can upload model. We can create digital twins from those existing model. This all can be done from an SDK. Now the SDK that we are talking about at this moment is azure.digitaltwin.core. So if I go right click and go to my NU get package manager. You see this is what. The SDK SDK for Azure Digital Twin services. So similarly, if you are a Java developer, if you are a Python developer, you will get a SDK to develop the same kind of application that we are developing in .NET to interact with the digital twins, to create model, to create digital twins and manage update and so on and so forth. What possibly we can do, you know, at this moment.
Now, so so this is something for the developer point of view. So that's what I say that it is not kind of overnight that you are going to run, uh, uh, write a code, but first we need to understand the power of the digital twin at this moment. The rest is you have to go and write the code to take the advantage of the digital twins to represent your physical environment digitally uh, from your application. So if, now if I go back to my digital twin explorer, which is currently in preview. So I should be able to see the relations between the room and the floor that I have created the digital twins that we are talking about. So I'll go and run this. So you can see out there. All right, so this is what the rooms, the floors that we can talk about. So you can always go and click there. So to get the details. So you can see humidity 80. So current values coming from this particular rooms can be seen out there. So if I select another room, the room zero, so you can see another set of data that we have out there. OK, so that is some some kind of. the metadata that represent this particular thing. So graphically, without going or getting the sense of the physical environment, you should be able to go and see it. Now the interconnection is not there that the contains. I just need to go and check about the relationship between the floor and the room. But we should be able to create a relations between the floor and the room, saying that floor contains this room. This floor contain this room, so you will get a fair idea as the kind of physical environment that you are currently dealing with, without going into the the remote physical environment from where you supposed to collect the data and take a decisions. And using this. Uh, this 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 two uh, that we are building the application that we are building who supposed to receive the command and subsequently it implements on the digital twins because this application is now connected to the digital twin instance that we have deployed some time back so there are commands like updating digital twins room 0 and we are going to give update the property room names with something called presidential suite. That is the name of the room. So, so this is what it says, the dynamic digital twins. So any times I can go and restructure my, the revamp my digital twins in context of model, in context of the properties, whatever you see. So room zero is being updated successfully. So now we can go back and see. By querying the digital twins. OK, so it takes some times out there to go in this case. So this is something that we should be able to uh, figure out in some time from now. So we just need to go and make it happen one more time. And you should be able to kind of see. So the idea is this. That you should be able to operate. Your. Digitalized or digital version of the physical environment. That is all about. Digital twins. So if I want to go and take the information, the digital twin of room zero, 
So the room name is being changed to the presidential suite. It may not be reflected immediately there on the Explorer, but you can see right there because we are reading it back by giving a command. As you can see, get digital twins zero one, and that is what we have seen. The rest of the thing is same. So you have submitted the queries and you're getting a response in a form of JSON. And you can see, validate your room name. No problem, so you can leave that. So we have just 10 minutes to go. That's perfectly fine. OK, now we can go and create some kind of relationship. Now the, re the last one is the relationship. So this is. So we said create relationship floor zero contains because that is the name of the relationship and room zero. And the name of the relationship is relationship zero. And similarly, the create relationship with the fourth floor one contain the room one. This is what we can see at this moment. OK, thank you. So like uh, and now you should be able to now go and take this something like OK, if everything is fine, so we should be able to. See this, so what is. The relationship detail from the floor zero, so I can say the get relationship from the floor zero, so it will give me the details out there. This is the target ID floor zero. So relationship name is contained. Similarly, we can go for. So. Floor one also we are going to get this. The similar detail. And uh, we can see more details by giving command like so. Sorry, this is just a minute. So this is something relationship contained the floor zero with the relationship zero completed. That is what the status that you can always see it. These are the commands that you should be able to go and see it. So you can see in more detail also something like this get relationship floor zero and relationship zero. So this is also different way of getting it. So now we can go to the. And refresh this one more time. The Explorer what we are dealing with at this moment. We'll run this query. Now you can see there is a connections between the floor one and the room one. There's a connections between the floor because we create the relations. The name of the relation is contained which is defined in the model some time back that you have seen this. So you can always go and click that also. The contains you can see the relationship name contains. The detail that you can see out. Right, so this is how. You should be able to. Kind of visualize how your physical environment is all about and rest is all about telemetries. 
you are supposed to receive the data from this particular room because these this room may have a thermostat who's supposed to give me a temperature. So I can also see them in a form of value, the temperature values that we we supposed to see from out of this, the telemetry properties. In fact, the same thing that can be seen by just making a very generic query by just say query. So it's giving me the detail. It says the select all from the digital twins. That's the query on this because programmatically it's being simplified. You do not have to write the explicit embedded query what we are looking at. So it give me the complete metadata in a form of JSON. You can see that from the presidential shoe. So what is the temperature currently and humidity currently from that room? So I got it from the room one. We got the details also. And the detail of the floor also. Get the response and the queries as you can see. So what are the all rooms in my environment also? You can just. Give this kind of sorry. Query also just to. So query. Select all from. So it's saying that what are all the rooms in my environment? Query by model. So this is also giving me. The kind of details that I want to get it, so it's a very interactive. Any point in time. So what are all the rooms from the floor zero? If I want to see that kind of information also select from the digital twins, the floor join with the room related to the floor dot contains where the floor is the floor zero. So I want to see the list of <coughs> rooms from the floor zero. Yeah, so that is something that you can go and check out there. So I can also fire a queries on the environment with a temperature, like the values that we are talking about. So query select from the digital twins T where the T dot temperature is get. So T represent the current entity from where the temperature need to be evaluated, which is greater than 75. like this is a very interactive query that we can see submitting the queries evaluating this yes this is the room one which is temperature is greater than 75 it's yeah it is uh, apparently we can see this is temperature is 80 at this moment So it allow us to make things more interactive by using an SDK from the digital twins. We can graphically make them. Uh, implemented with the help of some GUI by writing a web application or a mobile applications, because as of now we are working on an interactive console, but we can convert them for the GUI application also, you know, so we can always do that. Right, so. So this is what, you know, we can. explore to start with the digital twins and understand the context of the digital twins in the ecosystem of internet of things but really internet of things is a collection of services it's not only just an ADT but today's 
focus was only ADT, not a developing an end to end solutions by using relevant IoT services from the Microsoft Azure. OK. So what we are going to do now so we can if I do not want to use this, we can remove this. We can delete this. Because we are not going to use this anymore, so we can delete this. Particular instance that we have created and configured so we can delete it. We can remove it from the dashboard. In fact, we can remove this dashboard itself and I can go to the resource group. This is the resource group, so I can delete the resource group also. So we are cleaning the resources. What? We have created so far for this. Session. OK, so coming back to my presentation. So this is what the demo is all about, what we are discussing so far. So I just wanted to. Yeah. So you can see right there. So we understand the model. Of an environment, so in our case it was the floor and the room. And we have created the digital twins based on that particular model to represent the physical environment. We create relationship among those entities. And represent them as a graph. And subsequently, we have queried what we wanted to see any given point in time. So it could be a kind of uh, telemetries, it could be a relationship details, it could be overall details of my digital twins any given point in time. All right, so this is something that we just need to go and present. As I said, if you have to look into the bigger picture. So your digital twin will receive data from the. IOT hub. And IOT hub will receive the data from some kind of devices the thermostates and all. And before I take this data to the digital twin, so we can filter this data by using an Azure functions as an intermediate operations. Then that can be presented. With the digital twins. And subsequently we can read data from the digital twins and again reprocess. <laughs> those data using another functions or another the services. So you can keep on extending your implementations. Based on your need. So to repeat myself, a primary focus is at this moment is a digital twin. And we understood how the digital twin is going to help to build IoT solutions for any verticals for any industries that we are talking about it may be a manufacturing or it may be a retail or it could be a healthcare or it could be hospitalities and so on and so forth so that is all about for from today's presentations hope you understood the core concept of the digital twins so if you have any following questions, you can always post your questions. You can unmute. You can talk to me. Uh, on the developing of IoT solutions, so I would like to thank everyone for attending today's session. So hope. Uh, you will be able to. Incorporate this. Service that we have learned if you given a chance to develop and IoT solutions in the near future. Thank you once again.
Thank you, Navjoti sir, for this session. Uh, guys, if you have any question, you can ask in the chat box. Or else we are up to wind up the webinar. If you have any doubt or question, you can put it in the chat box. Thank you, Pavan. Thank you, Satish. Guys, it will be great if you will put your feedback on the feedback form which has been given. Please put your feedbacks on the feedback form. The link has been mentioned in the chat box.